Okay, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, this is the second webinar on behalf of BEST, and um, we're going to come on to a little bit about introductions. Um, today we're going to be focusing, as it says in the title, on really looking at your business um, objectively, uh, trying to analyze what works for your business, um, uh, what's worked in the past, uh, if you've been lucky enough to be able to be trading recently, what's currently working, how's the new, the new norm, which is a, a phrase you'll hear a couple of times from us today. Um, one thing also just to mention is um, whilst our name is the retail group, we, uh, we see that as covering all businesses who trade in the town centre environment, all businesses that trade from a business to consumer perspective. So hopefully there'll be a lot of lessons that are transferable uh, from today. Um, just a few bits of admin before I hand over to Mike. Um, basically, we have all uh, everyone's microphones are muted. And the reason for that is because if anybody talks or um, as we've had this week, uh, two incidences of dogs coming into the room and barking. We had a toddler come into the room and needed attention last night. So whenever these things happen, obviously, um, the control of the sound goes to that particular screen. So um, what we'll do is we'll mute everyone's um, uh, microphones uh, through, the, through the webinar. And if you have any questions, when we finish the webinar, we should be in about 45 minutes time. If you've got any questions, make a note and we will stay on the line and we'll be available to answer um, those questions at the end. So we'll open everyone's mics at the end and we'll have more of a discussion at the time. The other thing to say is the webinar is being recorded. Um, we're doing that so that it will be available for people who couldn't make tonight to watch offline. It'll also be available for you from the best website. And um, what we've what we'll do is we will let you know the contacts of uh, Darren, who is the contact at best. And if you drop him an email, he'll have a copy of the uh, recording by lunchtime tomorrow. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to Mike and he's going to do most of the talking and um, I will chip in with uh, bits of uh, pearls of knowledge and experience as and when appropriate. One, one final thing to say is there is a chat facility at the bottom of the screen. If you have any questions as we go through or you want to make any points, um, then by all means um, drop a, a question on the chat and you can either do it privately to myself or Mike um, or you can do uh, your comment so it's visible to everyone and we'll leave you to, to decide. So with, with that, um, I'll hand you over to Mike. Hi, everybody, and, uh, and hello again to the people that uh, attended last week. Uh, as I said, there's a few faces I recognise. Um, just just a, a quick bit of sort of uh, uh, overview. As Paul said, this is sort of the second in three. Um, we probably ought to, uh, in the tried and tested manner, give a nod to our sponsors. Um, <clears throat> uh, and, you know, which we'll come on to in a minute. As, as we've said in the first webinar, and we'll probably repeat it in the third, our aim is to help those businesses that, that uh, are currently closed and are thinking about opening, be that next week, the week after, the week after, or the week after, depending on when technically you're allowed and when you're comfortable to do so. Um, help those businesses that have already been trading to sort of think about expanding their operations where they're permitted. And really, this is a sort of a focus to help independent businesses. And as Paul said, town centre businesses are a particular focus, but we know from the work we do, uh, you know, uh, earlier this year, before lockdown, we were helping a, uh, a business to business uh, large garden centre look at how they can improve their performance and improve their, their sales and their customer satisfaction. We then went on to work with a, a, a business, a, a general small family run nursery and garden centre as well. So yeah, we know that the, the principles of what we do can work in all sorts of sectors. Um, BEST uh, are funding this uh, and you know, they're part of the Southeast Local Enterprise Partnership. That's the sort of a, a regional uh, government quango and 
Best's particular role is about helping businesses to find the right support. So that they've brought us in to be sort of a, as, a, as a specialist looking at sort of recovery planning post COVID. But Best, if you go onto the Best and if you just Google Best, you'll come up with the right website. And they can provide businesses with all sorts of support. And uh, many of it is already funded uh, with all sorts of grants, etc. So it is worth, uh, as a first base, having a look at their website and seeing what, whether they can provide you any specific report uh, support. Paul and I, I won't do the long-winded intro, we're both retailers by background. Um, <clears throat> I've run uh, variety stores, I set up a chain of gift gadget and gizmos. And more recently, we've even been operating as retailers on behalf of uh, one, one of our clients. We, we set up a mobile retail business. Uh, we uh, did all of the business planning and then we ended up uh, running it and testing it uh, initially for a, uh, uh, an initial test phase. And then we did so well that they asked us to uh, carry on running it. And we ran it until my wife got fed up of me disappearing every weekend to uh, go and enjoy race courses. But anyway, there you go. And again, nowadays, I think she'd be fed, she'd be delighted to meet you be every weekend, but that's a different story. Right. Um, so, but Mike, just before we go on, it might also be worth mentioning that we have online uh, Laurie Edmonds. Um, she is uh, another client of ours. We are doing some work for Brentwood Council. We're doing some retailer workshops. Um, Laurie's a font of all knowledge also. So if you do have any questions, hang on to the end and ask her directly or feel free to use the chat facility and she'll be able to help as we go through. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, 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 this, this, this particular slide always makes me laugh because we talk about the current and latest government guidelines and there is always the worry that they've just changed it in the last half an hour. Um, but uh, this basically, uh, we know that uh, there are uh, uh, some businesses that were viewed as being badged as essential not my favourite word, but they've been trading and operating uh, with social distancing measures. Then there's those uh, uh, non-essential businesses that are allowed to open as of Monday, unless you're in Northern Ireland, and then you can open tomorrow. Um, and then, of course, the, uh, the poor old hospitality and the businesses that we really want to start getting to as soon as possible uh, are still slightly in the dark with this uh, July the 4th, or it may be earlier, and maybe social distancing will be reduced to a metre and all sorts of things. So there is a bit of watch this space. Um, and this leads us on to this sort of viewpoint that we tend to focus on the things that we can do and that we can do now. So uh, as one of our many uh, little mantras, but uh, uh, that's our approach. And you know, th this evening, it really is, um, I wanted to try and get ask you prompt you, trigger you to look at your business, maybe with a slightly different pair of eyes, to look at your businesses in the way that we would look at them if we were sitting down with you in a room discussing your business. And there are some, so, uh, and there are some key things that we've learned to ask all sorts of businesses over the years uh, that help us to understand about how they can make some improvements and how they can adapt to whatever market conditions and so we're going to take you through a few of those things. And as ever, we start off with a bit of a thought process about the customs. Um, and uh, so it, it's, every business will, will, even if they haven't written it down and, don't, and ha haven't gone through the uh, process of writing a business plan, will have a significant amount of understanding about their own types of customers, you know, whether they're local regulars, whether they're repeat customers, are they frequent visitors? You know, if you're in, if we're a town centre business, you know, are they coming to me because they're already in the town centre? Are they coming to the town centre because of coming to me? Um, you know, if you just, Janet, uh, your, your comment that uh, you, you're having people contact you because they've just read about you doing something. So there are customers who are piggybacking on the, on the, on the back of other uh, existing ex, uh, uh, consumers and shoppers. You'll also know and have an understanding about whether your customers buy the same things from you, whenever, was it, is it week in, week out? You know, for years, unbeknown to me, I was known as a too large haddock man in my local fish and ship shop because it was only after about eight years where the guy was brave enough to say, oh, here comes too large haddock man. And I looked round over my shoulder and I realized it was me. 
Uh, and uh, I never knew that for five years I went in there on a Friday and bought the same thing every week. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I didn't. Need, I got to the point I didn't even have to order. Not, not, not just for you, though. <laughs> Sorry, no, no. Not uh, just for you. Fortunately, you can't see the size below. Anyway, right, okay, right. So, but the the upshot is that yeah, we all lots of us behave in very typical ways. And now, the reason for thinking about your customers in those ways is that you know that's a huge amount of information that will help you to think about how do i redirect my business now you know if i've got customers who who come and buy the same things from me then once i've had to change my layout am i making it obvious where the same things are or actually rather than making them queue to come and buy the same things can i already get them to pre-order can i deliver it to them are there other ways that I can make it easier for them to buy? Um, <clears throat> you could also adopt the supermarket approach. If, ever you, if any of you do any online ordering from the supermarkets, usually the last stage, or just before you uh, hand over far too much money, is uh, they say, and would you like your favorite products? And you go, oh yeah, tick, 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 tick. So again, is there any, is there any opportunity to learn from that? Would you also like X again? Yeah, and, and, and the, the question that we, that we ask every business once we've gone through that sort of detailed bit of analysis of um you know customer numbers numbers by hour busiest day of the week busiest time of the day typical transaction values how many units per transaction all of that sort of very hard sort of hard and dry information about customers you get to the nub why do they come and buy from you what is it about your business is it that you have a great business and you offer a great service or is it just that you're convenient you're on their doorstep you know, for years we worked for kodak in the days when they sold film and, and the ego of kodak was trying to tell everybody that um, consumers would walk miles uh, across burning coals to go to a kodak shop to buy their film and, and uh, we, we were the consultants that said no they don't they go because you're the nearest place to where they work or you're the nearest place to where they park their car um, so, so what is it about the fact that's driving the consumer to you? If it is that you've got exclusive products, you have great service, that they're loyal, you've got limited competition. These are huge assets to build on when you're thinking about how do I, how do I redirect my business going forward? Um, so, <clears throat> for those who said. You know, this information, you know, this sort of nuggets of information, how many customers an hour, you know, what do they buy most? Why are they buying from you? How do they react to my promotions? You know, um, are, how do they, what are the linked sales? What are the typical transactions? All of this information uh, is vital in terms of how you operate going forward, how you change the service model and how you change the layout and delivery of your trading environment a, a physical environment pause for breath um so in terms but just if you think about it from the customer's side because uh, it's you need you always but you always will need to think about your business from two sides one your view of the consumer and the sort of the the hard performance indicators of how consumers behave but it's also worth thinking about um what is it that the customer is going through at that particular moment in time um you know <clears throat> in the last week since the the previous webinar we've had all sorts of views and conversations uh, about uh, the likely uh, uh, return of footfall and the return of shoppers to to town centers um, and you know, just earlier today, James Dawn, who, who owns and, and operates Waterston's bookshops, was being interviewed on the TV, uh, and the and the journalist said, "So, uh, how how dramatically, how different, how much difference do you think consumers will be now than they were before COVID?" And he very calmly said, "Not much, really. You know, not much. They, once they come back to our stores, they're going to behave in fairly predictable and usual manners." But you know, he then went on to say how they were adapting their stores for this current situation. So, you know, are customers going to be more time pressed? Well, if they're having to queue to get into more shops, and there are fewer people allowed in more shops, then they might be they might have less time. They might be less keen on browsing. 
Um, they're going to be constantly reminded to keep cleaning their hands. Uh, they may well not want to pick up and touch products unless they have to. Uh, so th with one eye on the fact that it's then difficult for the retailer, uh, yeah, we had a, uh, uh, we, we, uh, uh, had a question from a, a wedding boutique operator yesterday who said, how do I cope with the fact that you know, my, my clients want to try on the dresses and you know, they always want to pick the same sort of best-selling dresses. And how, how, do I try, how do I allow that? if I then have to quarantine those, those garments for 72 hours. Uh, and for that particular retail, we started to talk about having a more sort of uh, bespoke appointment type operation and then sort of making sure that there was allowing the gaps between, not 72 hours, but allowing the gaps between different typical groups of customers. Um, <clears throat> yeah, will customers, customers may also want to buy more and I'm not thinking of the of the great of the great rule uh, loo roll panic buying uh, escapade of a few months ago. But you know, customers may well want to be stocking up so that they have to go out less often and they might go less frequently to stores. So, will what what effect will that have on your stock holding? Um, will people be happy to queue, or indeed, how do you make them happy while they're in the queue? And one of the key things will be to make sure that that queue moves quickly so how is it that you can tackle your business operation to make sure that that queue is moving quickly whatever it may be um, one, of the, uh, one of the biggest changes i think um you can tell <coughs> excuse me you can tell that i'm uh, ex tesco one of the big changes that the supermarkets have been revealing is um basically people are coming less and spending more so we're going back to the weekly shop or the bi-weekly shop so for about 10 years, there's been a real trend, a move away from people going to the bigger supermarkets and you know, spending 150, 200 quid on a sort of trolley and a half of, uh, of, of goods. And what tends to happen, uh, what, what has been happening over the last few years is very much people are going much more often and buying less. So frequency three or four times a week and just buying stuff that they need for the next couple of days. Um, the uh, Dave Lewis was seen from Tesco last week as basically saying we're going back to the uh, bi-weekly shop, the fortnightly shop. So uh, that's the that's function of people are uh, they're nervous, they want a quick transaction, um, they uh, want to reduce their risk, so potentially buying more. So you need to make sure that you've got um, particularly lots of your best sellers in stock. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to go through all the points on this page because I think we've covered off some of these already. But one, the key thing that, that again, just from a, a conversation, a, a workshop webinar that we had yesterday, um, uh, sort of current experience, a, a, a deli operator, a small food store operator, uh, no, they were they're, they're back to being fully open and trading as normal or as normal as can be with uh, hygiene and, and space controls and social distancing measures in place. But they said what they've what they have absolutely seen are fewer people coming into their deli. The visits uh, have reduced from being sort of multiple times a week to less than once a week. But when people are coming in, their transaction value was significantly different, a, a, an increased transaction value. So which had a direct effect on, on how long it was taking them to serve customers and how long it was taking them to process customers and then what that meant in the queue. So th this sort of thinking about, you know, your average transaction values, your typical number of customers uh, a day, how you, uh, you know, your normal busy period, how do you make sure that you're, you know, you don't have a huge queue outside your store and trying to get into your store when and trying to process the 20 customers that you would normally have at the peak period and are there ways that you can spread those customers throughout the rest of the day? I think just Mike on this, just sorry, just just that photo there. That that's a photo actually of a local cafe to to here. Um, it's a walk-in cafe. Ninety percent of the business um, inside and ninety percent of the floor space is uh, or was uh, seating and tables and chairs. And what they've done is they've gone to a serve over kiosk type operation and they've taken. Um, what was two or three linear meters of product down one side of the road at one side of the shop and they put it front of place on the window so as people are walking past on the way to the station they can see this product which previously was at the back of the shop behind the behind the counter so um, what a, a good measure to do is if you have got a retail business or a, a, an F&B business 
just walk past your shop quickly. Just just walk past down the street and just what are the things you see? Do you see the range? Do you get notified of what's available? Can you see what the best sellers are? Can you see what the full range is? So just to just you know try and think through the eyes of the customer. Oh, uh, you you've reminded me of some uh, of another story now. Um, right, uh, many years ago we worked for we, uh, um, the, the walk by thing is something we do uh, time and time again with businesses. We uh, when we're actually got the chance to do a physical review with them, we actually ask the owner, the operator, to come outside, and we walk past their shop and we walk past the neighbouring shops, uh, the neighbouring businesses, and we say what did you notice what can you see what stood out for you um and it, it it's uh, uh, amazing how often things stand out in the other shops and, and very little stands out in their own shop um so we've uh, we go through that process and, and it's the same thing you know again it's equally the same if you're promoting things online what you know in that sort of nanosecond that people will give you the attention span what do they see what do they notice uh, <clears throat> Right. Sorry, I'm going to go on to it. So I'm just conscious of time and I won't try not to move too too quickly through different things and also not spend too long on one topic. Uh, we could have a whole session just on uh, understanding your customer base. Um, the flip side of looking at your business uh, in terms of looking at it from the consumer, but is, is to look at it in terms of how does it perform? Uh, and uh, we take the, we spend a great deal of time looking at businesses and saying it's not just all about the turnover uh, there are a variety of uh, performance indicators uh, that you should sort of look at and monitor um, and so we're, we're going to have a look at some of those and, and we'll talk a little bit about some of those and sort of uh, um, and uh, again when we speak to businesses when we're with them face to face we, we go through a process and we just ask them okay yes well let's have a little bit of discussion about how sales are going at the moment, how do they compare um, to last year. And obviously, you know, for many businesses, you know, looking at sales now is a non-starter, or even if you've been open for a while, looking at them for the last few months is a non-starter. But let's look at what normal sales would be, uh, and then also start to look at, okay, well, what, what are the things that drive that turnover figure? Um, what, are the, what are the products that you sell most of? What are, what are consistently the long-term bestsellers? Um, I ran a gift business. I ran a gift business uh, for, for three, four years, uh, 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 quite some time ago now. And um, one of the things when we were looking at our business, one of the things that we realized was that our best-selling products, our best-selling products were always in the 10 to 15 pound range. So every, every, when we looked at the best selling by volume, everything was in the 10 to 15 pound range, except for one product, which we started off selling for one pound 99. So and when we looked at, so we were looking at volume sales as in turnover and also value sales. And there, there's another thing to look at there was, is the difference between unit sales and volume sales so yeah we we so our little one pound 99 product not only featured as a best selling because we were selling thousands of them but it also featured as a best selling because we were selling thousands tens of thousands of pounds of them and it sort of struck with me how this one pound 99 was comparing and doing really well compared to a 50 pound product that we only had to sell 10 of for it to feature as a as a best seller and so the, the number one thing that we did with that one with that one pound 99 product was within a year we had got to the point of selling it for three pounds 99. we just kept moving the price up 50p 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 and even at three pound 99 it still appeared as a top 10 selling product so so when you look at your sales history and your sales information whatever it may be Look at it both in terms of value of sales and units of sales. And then there's, the, you know, the, 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 I touched on this last, last week about looking at the 80-20 split and, and what are the core products that generate the maximum amount of revenue within your business. 
And at the moment, you know, in, in our current market conditions, it really is the time to focus on those core products and build your sales value and your sales volume around those core products. And then final bit of looking at your sales information and sales history is to look at how that changes seasonally and how that changes uh, as, a, as a result of promotions. Um, and I'll just take two, two, 30 seconds to talk about promotions. Please don't fall into the trap of thinking that every promotion has to be about giving away margin and reducing prices. You know, <clears throat> some of the most successful product promotions are simply announcing something is new. You know, no price reduction, it's just new. It's, uh, uh, it's about something that's exclusive. Um, it's uh, an award-winning product, whatever it may be. There are lots of reasons to have promotions which are not purely around giving price um, uh, or giving margin away. Uh, there are times clearly when you have to give margin away and there are times when uh, you, you need to have promotions that fit in with the rest of the seasonal calendar. Uh, another day, another dollar, I'll tell you that if you have sales uh, and always make sure your sales sign is in, is in red because that's the only sign that stands for a sale. Uh, I once ran a huge uh, department store and was uh, convinced by, uh, by the designers to do all the sale signs in pink. And, uh, <clears throat> and, we, uh, uh, and we had customers walking in saying, have you got a sale on? Paul's telling me to move on. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> right, okay. So uh, and that's because I won't look at my phone if he's texting me. Right. Yeah, I've done that as well, you didn't. I know, good. <laughs> Right, here we go. So, uh, here we go. Just some very, very useful uh, uh, KPIs, key performance indicators to, to monitor. And it doesn't matter what your business are, is. Um, average transaction values, ATVs, units per transaction, you know, uh, that UPT, how many items, that's otherwise known as the basket size, numbers of transactions per day, per week, per hour, hourly trading patterns, um, best sellers, where they are and how much they account for. And the reason for knowing what these figures are and, under, and looking at them is that you can then start to use them. And typically, the more you increase any of these things, the more your sales will increase. So sometimes it's very difficult to go, right, how do I add 10% to my turnover? But it's easier to think that if one in every 10 customers buys a second product, that will add 10% to my turnover. So it's about thinking about what are the factors that underpin uh, the, your, your sales and how you can use that information? Next point is then, once you've, done, once you've got a, a basis of understanding this sort of information, these KPIs, it's then, okay, how do I then use that in terms of, or make sure that I'm using that when I start to replan and adapt my model? Because at the moment, a lot of the changes that you're making to your stores and your businesses, whether it's takeaways, whether it's shops or whatever, whatever it is, a wholesale activity, a business to business activity. One of the key things, you know, you're going to be making those changes in reaction to the, the sort of the mood music, which is safe, social distance, um, you know, uh, prevent cues, et cetera, et cetera. But actually, if you plan in as part of that repositioning your business, if you plan in, okay, how will the physical changes help me to increase my average transaction value? How will it help me increase the number of units for sale? How will it help me increase the performance of my promotions? All of those factors start to give you a different way of looking at those key performance indicators. And also, you know, making sure that your new model is helping you to deliver sales. Yes, it's got to help you deliver customer satisfaction. It's got to be easy for the customer to use. But are you through that whole new model? Are you starting to uh, you know, make sure that you can tell people what's available? You know, here we've got budgeons who are just quite clearly announcing their temporary opening hours. They're promoting the fact they prefer you to pay contactless. The bottom picture is, uh, is, is literally an independent business that Paul helped uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, this is a, 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 a popular family-run restaurant uh, uh, catering business in, in a South London town. 
that was basically about to spend a huge amount of money buying perspex screens to put in between all of the tables and uh, and then and hadn't even thought about reopening as a takeaway business and uh, and more or less the, the picture that you see down there are almost word for word taken out of a little mini action plan that Paul emailed to the owner and uh, you know we said put up a sign saying you're open and you're safe so they put up a sign saying we're open and we're safe you know it's that sort of Mike, thing. I think you might be guilty of uh, uh, over overselling it it's a, it's a greasy spoon basically wow uh, but but family eatery. Family eatery. The, the key thing is um, the operator thought that as soon as she went to a, a serve over kiosk um, and she was already on um, Deliveroo and Uber Eats and so on, she thought, that's it, job done, I've done it. And then actually what happened is when she then opened the first day, the phone wasn't ringing off the hook and she sort of got in touch with me a bit, a bit upset and said, it's not really working. And I said, well, have you actually told people? Have you told, you know, have you got your Instagram page up? Have you got your Facebook page up? Have you, you know, you're on the high street, the pedestrian area of the high street. As people walk past, scared, nervous, wanting to get home as quick as possible, are you actually telling people that you're open and you're safe? So hence, she literally, she took my words literally, and uh, uh, that was the, the sign. So the key thing is there is, once you've made the changes, make sure you then tell the customer as well. Right. Um, and again, here, just so you know, we've touched on this previously. We talk about the service model. It's a, uh, it's a phrase we've pinched from somewhere else. But you know, again, if you've adapted the way you are serving customers, and if you and you've had to adapt, you know, you can no longer welcome people into the store. You're, uh, I mean, who'd have thought that uh, uh, you know six months ago, if somebody said, "Oh, I'm going to make my my customers queue outside in the rain," they'd have said, "Well, that's a recipe for disaster." Um, the, so, you know, but now people are accepting of that. Maybe you don't, if you can find a way to not put them in the rain once we get through to the autumn, that would be good. Um, but, you know, so in terms of queuing and managing that whole process, you know, does every customer have to queue? Can you not adopt the same approach as a cinema where, you know, if you've pre ordered, pre paid, pre booked, you can come along and pick something up and then if you haven't had the chance to do that then you're in a separate queue so there's two types of ways and that would of course by encouraging the pre-ordering pre-buying pre-booking that then speeds up your service it also helps you with your stock control also helps you with your display also gives you lots of great information about what's selling and the rate of sale that you can then build into how you deliver uh, the rest of your service going forward uh, if you've got a queue, are you out there actually uh, selling to that queue? Um, you know, are you giving them some uh, a, an ability to almost put in a, a mini written request for what they'd like from you? And also, you know, encouraging them to, to are you using it as a part of the sort of engagement process in a socially distanced way? Uh, my other favourite one, having seen it recently, is you know, how, is that queue is the queue then? blocking your attempt to have an impactful window and, a, and an impactful display onto the high street. And if possible, can you two-tier your window? Can you have one sort of let the bottom half of it focused at the queue and then the top of half of it promoting wider messages to people on the other side of the road or even passing traffic? So it's about how do we use that asset uh, 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 in, in a really productive way? And, and so, you know, not only does the, the new physical presentation of your store have to help you generate sales, and then so does the service model. Uh, Paul's probably stolen some of my thunder here with this, what he, what he, uh, 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 as he always does. In terms of communicating to customers, I mean, I, I think that, you know, we've, you've got limited, we go back to this limited, I, I think he's got this picture because he just likes it. It's a, good, it's a good example of solid color blocking. Um, but anyway, um, the, uh, uh, in terms of how do you, how can you maximize the amount of communication? And, and so, yes, on one hand, we want to be saying we're safe, we're clean, we're hygienic. Uh, we're reminding people how our business model has changed, how our layout might have changed. But don't forget the core, uh, core use of that window or the core use of your external media activity social media activity whatever is really about promoting your business 
promoting what you have on, uh, available, promoting what you have featured, what you have on offer, promoting the reasons to buy from you. So going back to the very start point where you say, why is it that people buy from me? And there's no harm in reminding people of why they buy from you. That's a really positive selling message. message. Uh, and to keep repeating that same message, message at every opportunity. So I think that th there are a number of things that you want to communicate and it's got to be, it, 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 but one of the key things, don't let it be lost in all the other communication that actually we're here to take some money from you. And you know, we quite like you to spend your money on this or on that, over, or we know you like spending your money on this. Why don't you get one of these as well? So that's a promotion. Another example of that, we've got a local, it's actually the Budgeons. It's an independent food store operating as a franchise um, under the Budgeons name. And um, they've done something which you would never have thought would work uh, in, in uh, historic uh, terms. Uh, when you walk in the store now, you know what the first thing you see in the store is? Uh, go on, disposable, no. disposable gloves, hand gel and face masks. And they sell a load. Oh, they're selling them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sale. It's the first thing that you can buy as you go in. So everyone picks them up on the way to do the rest of their shopping. Right. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, full marks. Right. Um, so, in terms of so, so we in terms of sort of thinking about uh, your trading plan, and you know, it, it sort of sounds like an awfully grand thing, doesn't it? Having a trading plan, and these are not things that necessarily need to be written down in um, uh, in glorified, you know, bound. Uh, uh, business plans and with pictures and you know somebody else to proofread it and type it this is about in your mind's eye view of how are you going to structure your business going forward um, and uh, I think there are some key things that, 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 that are really important you know every customer going forward every customer is going to be hugely valuable and so there's two ways is it is your business giving most benefit to that customer and are you getting the most benefit from that customer? There's two ways of looking at it. So are you giving the most benefit to them and are you getting the most benefit from them? Um, if there are fewer customers around, you know, the real target is how do we increase our ATVs? How do we increase those average transaction values? Uh, how, how do we make every opportunity? And, and that's just, that's, don't forget, not only the physical, the physical side of increasing average transaction values, but also the the, uh, the human side, the communication side. You know, it, it, it's, I always found it really interesting that Boots, when they would promote uh, three for two as a, as a promotion, that when you get to the till, even the staff are trained to remind you that you can have that on three for two. So it, it's, they've carried it all the way from the media, through posters, through to the staff delivering the same message. Um, <clears throat> So build on your historic strengths, build on your successes, remind people of those, spread customers across the day, uh, and make sure that the business model is looking to do that. So, and, and we come back to our, uh, if you sat with us last week, you'll have heard me bang on about making it easy for the customer, make it easy for them to spend more with you and make it easy to attract more customers. Ideally, any business, if you do both, you're on a recipe for success. This is Paul's favourite page, uh, 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 and, and, and up to a point, it, it's mine in terms of sort of, you know, if we're sort of establishing targets, right, and, and, and if um, we would recommend that uh, regardless of uh, the, the previous 45 minutes of, uh, of discussion, if you take one thing away, if you take a screenshot of this page, or uh, once it's available online, actually download it and print off this page and and sit down once a week or once a month and say right okay have i uh, <clears throat> almost like a mini checklist not so, it's not so much, the target is uh, not necessarily numeric targets but you know have i have i done enough this week this month to help me sell more to my existing customers yes no if no what am i going to do about it you know, um, have I done enough to spread my customers across the week so they're not, I'm not suffering sort of peaks of, peaks of, uh, of activity and, and troughs of famine and no activity? 
one of the things that one of the things that I've implemented. What are my targets for reducing the queue time? What are my what are my targets for you know, good old average transaction and and, uh, and units per transaction? Uh, uh, have I reviewed my stock holding, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So there's a, a series of you know fairly fundamental points here. Um, you know, and we and the, the, by the way, this is just you know these are uh, our our stab, but you know, equally there'll be things that you can add in. You know, um, you know a key one that we talk to lots of businesses about, um, and it's sort of hidden away here in the in the second to last box on on the second column. Do I have successful promotions? Are they impactful and visible? Um, because that's the other thing we can have. We can have things that are featured on a promotion, but actually, are they visible? Have we given them the space? Are they? Are people going to notice them? Would anybody notice them? So I think these are key things to step back and just have a think about. I think, Mike. The other, the other thing. The other thing to mention is, you know, just read these and write your own you know these, these are very much designed as thought provokers these are things that we we know work with they, they work well for retail businesses but you might have your own it might be customer satisfaction you might be you know i want to be getting five new leads a day i want to be selling five customer uh, targeting selling um, five items a day whatever your business is in but you know be realistic set the target don't try and do it all at, at once uh, get help write it down and plan it over a, over a period of time. So by by the summer, I want to be doing this. By autumn, I want to be doing that. And, and just take that, whether it's the first of the month or the, the first of every third month, just take that time. Just set yourself a couple of hours uh, to go through that plan and say, right, what are, which of them have I delivered? Which of them have I not delivered? And then how am I going to change that going forward for the next three months? And, and that, Paul, thanks, Paul. That's given me a, a minute to think about something that we, I've missed here. Uh, the, the, the training and motivating and rewarding the team. Uh, 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 and there's a simple one there that I, again, uh, as, a, as a retailer, I, I picked up and I learned from somebody. Um, uh, we were working for a shoe business and, uh, and the, the sales manager for that shoe business, whenever he was in a store, he never used to go up to any of his staff and say, right, I need you to sell X pairs of shoes today. He would just go up and he would say, right, um, uh, today I'd like you to tell eight people about our promotion. And I used to say, why? And I went, why do you want them to tell eight people? He said, I know that if they tell eight people, then probably two people are going to spend money on the promotion. He said, I don't need to tell them to sell anything. I just need to tell them to talk to the customer and share the information. And it's sort of, you know, Simple things like that really registered with me, uh, and and again, you know, because not, not, uh, uh, the uh, typical English uh, retail employee doesn't necessarily like to think that they're selling, but they're quite happy to talk to people, particularly if you tell them they're allowed to talk to people. So, um, moving through, and before Paul gives me another moving on sign, um, <clears throat> uh, how do you, how are you going to sort of judge whether it's working. How are you going to judge whether you're doing the right thing? Well, hopefully uh, by implementing and monitoring those ATVs and all the, the other KPIs, and I should stop using acronyms, key performance indicators. And by the way, they, you, you will identify what your performance indicators are. Uh, but once you start to monitor them, you know, there are some other simple things that you can do. You know, <clears throat> speak to the customer, have they noticed? Have they noticed the changes? Um, are the changes working for them? Um, are there things that they uh, are finding difficult about your business? Have they heard about your promotion? Did you notice my promotion? Um, you know, we, I remember standing in front of a, a, of a hardware store retailer uh, a few years ago, and uh, we're doing a store critique, and I was going through a, 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 a checklist. I've got my clipboard and a badge, and he knows that I'm there. And he, and he said, what do you think to my promotion? And I'm quite tall and, and this guy was quite tall. And I looked around from side to side and I said, where's your promotion? And he told me to look up and directly above him at about eight, nine feet in the air was a poster saying what was on promotion. And I said, it's a great poster, but it's about four foot too high. At least it needs to be, you know, that classic eye level by eye level. So you know, if your customers aren't seeing the promotions, they're not getting the message, they're not going to spend the money on what you want to sell. Um, 
So in terms of, you know, so speak to the customers, have a look at those, uh, you know, monitor and, and, uh, uh, and evaluate the KPIs. But as it says there, give change a chance, you know, give it some time. Not everything will be instantaneous. Oh, hello, I've lost Paul. He's gone off into the sea. Oh, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> right. So give change a chance and, um, uh, and make sure, you know, just allow the time for the thing to kick in. You know, it will not be instantaneous. That said, if you have lots of regular repeat businesses, uh, customers, sorry, if you have lots of regular repeat customers, then that they will notice things fairly quickly and you can certainly start that, that engagement. Uh, you know, monitor the social media. What are people saying about your business? Are they saying, oh, this is good, this is not good? Um, are, there, uh, are there people responding to your posts? Are there people responding to uh, your messages? And then, you know, the classic, don't be out of stock of key lines. Keep, you know, don't, you know, this is not the time to have lost sales. Uh, as another retail client of ours, any customer who comes in and wants to buy something, he used to talk, call it, it's a lost sale. If we, if they haven't bought something from us and they, we haven't got what they wanted and then we can't convert them to something else, he, that used to reduce him to tears. So, and, and as we said, it's about understanding how people are reacting to the promotions. The other, thing you, Mike, the other thing you could do is uh, talk to your staff, get them involved, uh, what works from their perspective. And then the other thing is, um, you know, you're all independent businesses. You probably know lots of other people who run independent businesses. Get them to look at your business objectively. Get them to look at it through the eyes of the customer. And you'll be quite interested in some of the, uh, the feedback you, you get. Speaking of feedback, that leads me nicely on to. Um, <laughs> He's doing his so I, almost, I almost planned that, didn't I? Um, we are coming to the end of the um, webinar. I'm going to la launch a one question poll. We do uh, like um, uh, we, we do as we uh, preach and I'm going to la launch the poll. And um, if you found today's session useful, please let us know. If you didn't, please let us know. Uh, so um uh, it'll take you all of about a second right first one that's very useful thank you very much okay, okay. Moving on. right okay um so in terms of um key things to remember key things to remember from today and then you know hopefully we'll get, have some time for some questions as well um you, you will know inherently you will know even if you haven't written it down an awful lot about your customers and how they currently use your business um, you know, it is worth taking a few minutes to start to break that down, note it, and start to use that information going forward. Um, equally, customers will have changed their behaviour. They, 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 uh, they have to change their behaviour. Mrs Evans hasn't set foot in a shop for months. That's, that's certainly a change of behaviour. Oh, hello, Jeanette's gone. Yeah, she had to go. She's messaging me. All right. Thank Carry you. on. We kept we kept her longer than the uh, the allocated half an hour. Um, your business will need to uh, will your business will need it need to have adapted. Apologies, a mouthful. Um, so again, you know, so there's there's a variety of key things. So you know, look at how that adaptation is working, how it's being received, and then you know, the last point from today is is think about the success measures and think about what how you think success will look going forward and you know by understanding what the right sort of targets for your plan not just the the uh, oh i want this sales target you know it's about you know how many happy customers have i got you know have my has uh, has have my saturday staff told 10 people about the promotion how, whatever it may be um you know, have I got have I got customers have I succeeded in getting customers to be recommending my business to other other customers you know there's a whole variety of targets that you can set yourself uh, and then monitoring them and using them to understand how your business is going forward Paul you're going to do that um, no I, I, basically there's lots of information out there we don't need to go through it uh, now um, uh, you're not in a, alone there are there's lots of support um, the um, HMG uh, coronavirus uh, trading uh, information is excellent. Also, have a look at the FSB, Federation of Small Businesses, and have a look at the British Retail Consortium, both of which are really good. That's it. Okay. 
and I think that gives us a, a, a bit of a, an and finally. Uh, Paul's already floated his uh, uh, feedback questionnaire. Um, so as, as Paul said at the outset, this will be available as a recording. It will be available from BEST. Um, we've got another webinar uh, next uh, Thursday, which is sort of, uh, again, focusing on uh, looking at how it might have performed in the first few days and uh, looking at further growing your business in, in, uh, in a fairly terrible phrase, the new normal. Uh, so good luck and thank you for your attention. Any particular questions, fire them into Paul. <laughs> Thanks, Mike.